Hi guys, this tutorial is called linear motion because we're talking about motion in a straight line and that's what linear means. And that can be right to left or up and down. Take a minute, look at this picture and see if you can figure out what it's trying to show you. To make the most use of the tutorial, you should really pause here, hit the pause button and think about it. What's happening here? Hopefully you did that. Now when I talk about it, you can see if your ideas match mine. What I see is a person running towards their house. Maybe they suddenly realize that, you know what, there's something I want to watch on TV. Something really, really, really good and it's coming on in two minutes. I've got to get to the house. So they start running at six meters per second. That's what that symbol M slash S sounds like when you say it out loud. Meters per second, which is pretty fast. And then this person gets a little bit into the trip and realizes, whew, man, I'm out of shape. And they have to slow down to just two meters per second. And then the person decides, no, I'm not gonna miss my show. And they pick it up and they're going eight meters per second the rest of the way to the house. So this is pretty typical of when a person is moving, right? You don't usually maintain the same speed throughout an entire trip. Things change and you change your speed accordingly. What do we call each of these measurements? Well, if I just tell you that someone is going six meters per second, that's their speed. If I add in that they're traveling six meters per second in this direction, that's velocity. And you might think, oh, those two words mean the same exact thing. Well, they almost do. Velocity includes the direction you're traveling in. And you can use it as east, west, south, north, or you could say up or down, left or right. Scientists even use plus and minus to describe velocity because they often graph velocity. And you know that on a graph, the origin is here. And this is the positive x direction, and that's the negative x direction. So if you're traveling to the left of the origin, we would say you're moving with a negative velocity. That doesn't mean that you're going slower than zero meters per second. It means you're traveling whatever speed you're going in the direction that's to the left of the middle of your graph. These two measurements, the speed and the velocity, are both instantaneous measures. And you can see the word instant in instantaneous. Instantaneous measurements of how fast you're going mean at that exact moment, that's how fast you're going, in that instant. So I call this an instantaneous speed or velocity because you're getting it basically from a measurement taken exactly at that point in time. This is similar to what your speedometer does in the car. When you look it down at your speedometer, it's telling you how fast you're going right then. And that's true for all of these speed measurements. They're instantaneous speeds and instantaneous velocities. But there's another way to measure speed. Let's say that I know that the total distance from here to here, the door of my house, is a thousand meters. And let's say that at the moment that I start running, I notice what time it is, and I check again when I get to the door, and the total time that has passed is 200 seconds. If that's the case, I can calculate the average speed because average speed is equal to the total distance you travel divided by the total amount of time that it takes to do it. So 1,000 divided by 200 is gonna give me five meters per second. That is my average speed, and I was traveling to the right. So my average velocity is five meters per second to the right. This is different than the instantaneous speed. At any given moment, I could have been going slower or faster, but on average, the total trip took was an average of five meters per second. So to sum up, speed is how fast something moves. Velocity is how fast something moves in a given direction. And there's two kinds of speed and velocity. There's instantaneous speed or velocity, which is taken at a particular moment in time, 
usually by a speedometer. Or if you want to calculate instantaneous velocity or speed, you need something called calculus, which is math that you will possibly take in high school, maybe in college. Average speed or velocity, on the other hand, is how fast you were going for the entire trip. And the two formulas are identical for speed and velocity, and these are both for average. There's no way without calculus, which is a math you haven't taken yet, to calculate instantaneous speed or velocity. So you can just do it for the whole trip. Okay, so what about acceleration? Acceleration is a measure of how your velocity is changing. And remember, velocity includes both speed and direction. So, you are accelerating if you speed up, slow down, or change direction. Acceleration can also be positive or negative, but this time, a positive acceleration means that you're speeding up, and a negative acceleration means you're slowing down. That's different than what we said for positive and negative velocity. You can't have a velocity that is a negative number because you can't go any slower than not going at all. But you can have an acceleration that's a negative number because your speed could be being reduced. And if your speed is being reduced, we call that a negative acceleration. This can get really confusing. But with practice, you'll get used to the, what the positive and negative signs mean for velocity and acceleration. They're different than each other. Okay, so take a second and look at each of these cars and see if you can figure out in what way each of these cars is accelerating. Pause the tutorial and think about it and then come back and listen to my explanation. Okay, so the first car is increasing its speed from 30 kilometers per hour to 60 kilometers per hour. So an increase in speed is an acceleration. The second picture, there's no change in speed. The car is still 60 miles per hour at the end as it was at the beginning, so you might think, oh, there's no acceleration there. Except, acceleration includes changes in direction. And because the car is curving and not going in a straight line, its direction is always changing throughout its trip, which means that it is in fact accelerating. In the third picture, we start at 60 kilometers per hour and we end at zero. So we're slowing down and coming to a stop, which is also a form of accelerating because our, in all three pictures, our velocity is changing. Remember, velocity is how fast you're going in a particular direction. So either in each picture, the speed is changing, going up or down, or the direction is changing. One last thing I want to leave you with. As this little guy accelerates towards his house, you'll notice that each arrow that I've drawn underneath his speed is slightly different. And that's because these arrows are not just arrows pointing the way of his travel. They are actually vectors. And you'll remember previously when we talked about forces, a vector has two things. It has a, ma a magnitude, which is the amount that it is, and it also has a direction. Velocity is represented in physics just like a force is, with an arrow that points in a particular direction and is as long as the magnitude. Acceleration is also a vector. That wraps it up for the linear motion tutorial. See you in class.